Welcome to Guns and Gear Network everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. We're going to bring you this two-part video series about uh, body armor, specifically about Chinese-made body armor. And um, this first video is going to be a tabletop review and discussion, a little bit about armor, a little about the Chinese body armor, and so forth. So I know some of you guys are going, what in the world? Are you crazy? There's no way I'd trust my life to Chinese body armor. Uh, we'll discuss that a little bit about that here in a few minutes, um, but I understand your concern and we'll, we'll talk about that and address that here in a minute. Um, so let's talk body armor just a little bit. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you probably know a little bit about it. You have soft body armor panels, you have hard uh, uh, armor, and uh, there's different styles of hard uh, plates. You've got ceramics, you've got polyethylene, you've got steel, things like that. So the reason I even wanted to do this video and kind of figure things out, if you follow my channel, you know I'm try, I try to be budget friendly because you know I'm not the channel that caters to the high speed, low drag operators. They already know their stuff and they you know what they want to buy. What I try doing is educating the responsible armed citizen that's looking to protect themselves, protect their family, and be able to afford it. So. There's some things that you buy that are just not cheap, and that's just the way it is. Um, however, I think there are some compromises that can be made that uh, the responsible armed citizen can have some things that can protect them and that's still reasonable in price. One of the first things that came about that was reasonable in price uh, probably seven or eight years ago now was the AR-500 style armor that is steel plates. Now, when that first hit the market, you know, it was, it was sort of almost expensive, but it wasn't dirt cheap either, uh, and prices have crept down. And over time, they've actually made some advances even with it. As far as it was flat at one time, now it's curved, so it fits your body better. It's got more of a shooter's cut, things like that. So they've made some advances also. Um, they also designed anti-spalling uh, coatings, which help cut down on the uh, splatter. Um, and they're multi-hit plates, which is a good thing. If you notice, I have some. I actually have a few sets of them. Because of, they're economical, they, they do what they're supposed to, they stop rounds, things like that. And they're multi-hit, so, and there is no shelf life. They do not degrade over time. They can be, you know, they'll be a fam family heirloom if they've never gotten shot and, you know, damaged or anything. Um, but let me say this about body armor. All body armor can be defeated. I don't care what it is. There's something that can defeat it. Um, but you have to look at what your risk factor is in your environment. So, you know, guys that are up against, you know, high, you know, high round, uh, I'm sorry, um, high velocity uh, rifle rounds need a different type of armor, like your military guys, than probably your average, you know, street cop. A street cop, matter of fact, most of the time, you know, probably 95% of his career, her career, is wearing soft body armor with a trauma plate insert, which is then still limited to what it'll stop. So keep that in mind. And they're, they're facing dangers every day. Um, but your SWAT team call out guys, they're probably going to wear the, obviously, the hard plates that usually can stop, um, you know, rifle rounds. So with that said, let's talk a little bit about the Chinese aspect of this situation. So I know some people are going to wig out and things like that. Let me first say that I'm a big advocate of trying to uh, support American companies, American-made worker, American workers, American-made products, all those things. So don't take this the wrong way. Um, however, if they can't come up with a price point that I think, you know, for the common person, you know, with a product, then we I can look outside of that. So I wouldn't even have this conversation if there was an American-made company making economical, uh, you know products in the body armor industry that was cheaper than this or as the same price or whatever uh, for similar products. So keep that in mind. Um, so I looked around and I decided that I would find a company that looked reputable, that looked like they did the correct testing and things like that. Um, here's what I'll say too. I promise you that you trust your life to Chinese made products on pretty much a daily basis of some sort. And what I mean by that is, if you go look at your smoke detector in your house, it's probably made in China. If you go look at your bar burglar alarm or your security system in your house, probably got China-made products in it. 
your fire extinguisher in your house probably made in China or potentially made in China. Um, your work environment probably has made in China products, i.e. the fire extinguishers, the whatever, um, potentially has that. Your tires in your car, if not your tires, if you decide, hey, I'm a Michelin guy and I'm only going to ride in Michelins, I got you, but I promise you, you pass a 75 mile per hour, 2,000 pound speed and bullet coming at you at least once on the, uh, a day with Chinese made tires. So there you go the airbags, the this, the that, the whatever in your car that potentially made in China, Mexico, whatever. So I hear you, I understand the argument and it's a total different conversation, but at the end of the day, that's what I decided to look at uh, with some of the Chinese made body armor because it was so reasonable. Let's not forget that the Chinese do have a military that do wear body armor. So, you know, they're obviously, you know, understanding the, the uh, manufacturing process to some degree. Um, even in China, right? Because they do have you know military over there. So now that we've talked about that, let's talk a little bit about uh, the body armor itself. Um, they decided to send me three plates, and the reason was I wanted to wear one, uh, wear a couple plates, and do that over an extended period of time, see how they held up uh, to you know heat and things and whatever. Then the other plate. Um, is going to be shot. The third plate, I don't know which one I'm going to shoot yet. I hadn't picked it, but I'll shoot the third plate and we're going to stress it beyond its level of uh, rating. And so it's going to fail. I'm going to tell you that ahead of time. I'm going to make it fail one way or another, but I want to see where that threshold is of getting it to fail. Um, let's talk a little bit about ceramic body armor in general. Um, and I'll post in the section below where I've got this information if you want to read about it. Uh, it's kind of long and boring, so I'm not going to give you all the particulars. But even with ceramics, there's different types of material that is used in manufacturing ceramic plates. Um, so it says the commercially manufactured ceramics for armor include materials such as boron carbide, aluminum oxide, um, silicon carbide, titanium boride, aluminum nitride, and Sendite. So there's a bunch of different variations. There's also a couple different manufacturing processes. One is called monolithic or it's one continuous piece. Then you also have um, mosaic, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is like your mosaic tile in your home, in your backsplash. So it, it is in segments or pieces. Some of that could be square pieces. Some of it could be um, actual uh, octagon shaped pieces. So it depends on how it's done. We, we, each manufacturer may be a little different. So they sent me three plates and uh, what we're looking here, they're 10 by 12, which is the same exact size as these. Um, these weigh roughly a little around four pounds or so compared to these, which are around 10 pounds. So you're looking at half the weight. Uh, and I can tell you after wearing them for an extended period of time, uh, they definitely make a big difference in the weight. Um, they actually uh, are two materials. This one's made of two materials. It is made of the silicon carbide, um, the uh, ceramic, and then it's also polyethylene. Polyethylene helps mitigate some of the blunt force trauma you're going to get uh, once that bullet hits the ceramic and breaks up because uh, it's because of the force of the energy from the bullet itself. It also has foam padding around the edges here which is designed for two reasons. It helps protect the plate in case you drop it, and also it makes it more comfortable to wear so you don't have sharp edges. Uh, it helps with that. It's also coated with a fabric material that is waterproof. It's almost like a ballistic nylon type material here, and I assume that would also help it with any type of potential spalling, uh, just that, and it also is just a nice coating. Uh, strike face, meaning this is the portion that you face forward. These are curved plates, just like the AR-500s, uh, so they are comfortable to wear. Uh, they are curved to your body, which is nice. And like I said, they're all marked on the back to let you know which level. These are uh, rated, this particular plate is NIJ level 3 plus, uh, which gets into your um, uh, military style uh, ammo uh, rifle rounds that it will stop that. So like I said, we're going to stress it to the point of breaking and just see where that level is. But um, I want to thank Militech for sending this out. Um, I'm excited because they're going to send, we're going to do quite a few videos over a period of time. 
because they are a manufacturer of armor and they do helmets, they do soft body armor, you know, uh, plates, they do it all. And so they're gonna send some other products for me to test over time. Um, so I'm interested in that to see how it does and uh, really excited about testing all those. And they're reasonably priced, guys. That was the whole point of this, was to find one that was reasonably priced, um, number one, and number two, that was lighter weight than what everybody now uh, considers the bargain in armor, which is the AR-500 stuff. So that's why, and you, I'm gonna put their information in the section below. You can go to their website, kind of start looking around. If you wanna wait till I do the testing to actually buy, I understand but uh, I highly suggest you go out and look at their website and see their pricing, very good pricing on what they have to offer as far as body armor. And I think you'll be surprised at how reasonable some of the prices are. Even in comparison to the AR-500 stuff, uh, this stuff is still pretty reasonable in price, to be honest with you. Um, and that's, I mean, if, I, if it holds up to my testing based on after looking at their uh, testing that they've done, e either written and or the videos they've posted already about the testing they went through with their product, uh, I'm going to trust my life to it, guys. I'm going to wear it, to be honest with you. It's going to be in my plate carrier, and I'm probably going to get a few other sets to put in some other plate carriers for my family, and, and I will use it, to be honest with you. And I, I mean, I always have the AR-500 stuff because, again, it has an unlimited shelf life. It's there forever. Uh, it can be used, uh, you know, whenever, 20 years. Years now, 100 years now, won't matter. Uh, it's not going to degrade over time. So I'll always have that style of body armor, but I also have some soft body armor too. If I just need something kind of covert, you know, um, concealable type body armor, I do have some uh, soft body armor too that I use occasionally for whatever reason. Um, but uh, anyway, guys, um, I interested, I'm interested in the whole series. Uh, I think it's going to be very interesting to, to see how this stuff plays out, and I'm pretty excited about doing it. Again, I want to thank Militech for sending this stuff out for us. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. That's always appreciated. It's over in that section over there. If you would share content, it's over in that section. Also in that section right there, uh, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit subscribe. That'll key, and also hit the little bell that'll alert you to any videos that we have like segment two of this uh, series of videos when we actually go and do the field testing you'll see that and get alerted when we actually post that up um, but anyway guys appreciate you tuning in if you got any questions or any comments or anything post those below as always like share and subscribe and we'll bring another video shortly have a great day guys